I was a child prodigy and I started playing the piano at the age of three and a half and started to compose music at the age of four. My father gave me a toy piano when I was three and a half years old. It was a small piano, it had about an octave and a half, I would say, not more. And I played on it. So that's probably how they discovered that I had musical talent. start life over again, I probably would, would do many things differently. But still, I believe if, if I were given the opportunity to, to do it over again, I would do exactly what I did before. My fundamental attitude towards my life is now just about the same that it was 50 years ago. I went to England and played before Queen Mary in June 1911, I was at that time eight years old. The so-called command performance at Buckingham Palace. My father and I were invited to appear before the Queen and the Prince of Wales was present also. And I gave a very interesting program for Her Majesty. At that time, my com program contained uh, Beethoven variations on God Save the King. Uh, Rondo by Mozart, a waltz by Chopin, and a lyrical piece by Grieg, prelude by Rachmaninov, the second Hungarian rhapsody by Liszt, and one of my own compositions. And the Queen seems to have been very much pleased. My mother was mainly interested in me as a pianist, in other words, to make a pianistic career, more in, let us say, the commercial sense, rather than the deep attachment to music as such, rather as a career than as a mission or a way of life, as I now consider it to be. Quite true, my mother didn't want me to grow up and didn't want me to give the appearance of a, of a person who has grown up and therefore wanted me to wear children's clothes and that irritated me profoundly. It wasn't an anger. It was a hurt that she wanted me to play music at that time, that to say when I was five, six, seven years old, that I didn't want the music for my concert career. You see, my mother wanted me to be a concert pianist. You can't be a concert pianist by playing Verdi and operatic songs. You can be a com concert singer. I loved the music that my father loved and hated the music that my mother loved, you know. So my mother was very realistic, very pragmatic, and very commercial. I can't say anything to her, against her, except she wanted me to play the music I didn't want to play. Well, the general fact of mismanagement is not just a lawsuit, but once one is mismanaged, then it's very difficult to, to establish a reputation that has been tarnished or blemished. When I realized that uh, my pianistic career, so to speak, was, e uh, was ended, I accepted it as, as something inevitable against which I would, was powerless to, to do anything. In other words, I took it sort of philosophically. It didn't, put, didn't make me despondent. I hated poverty, but not so much the fact that my pianistic career is over. So it, it did not matter too much to me. It still doesn't. I don't miss not having a piano so much because I hear music in, in my inner self and actually the actual sound is not essential. 
So unless I really want to play for somebody or on some special occasion, I don't really miss not having a piano. That sounds very strange coming from a pianist, but it's a fact. My temperament required, I would say, companionship, very much so, and, and still does. So that was a tremendous problem in my life, but I tried to cope with it as well as I could. I want a woman who cooks scrambled eggs soft, who gives me butter in the real way, the way it is served with the President Carter with a butter knife. I want a butter knife that is imperative. A woman who doesn't give me a butter knife, and we get a divorce next day. She might as well say Beethoven is no good composer. I want women to adhere to my impeccable taste for service, aristocratic, no matter how poor I am. I'm an, arist I'm an aristocrat. Maybe my marriage, marriage has had an adverse effect upon my musical career. I don't say that with absolute certainty, though, but there is a possibility. But I didn't get, um, I was married nine times, but that doesn't mean that I was divorced nine times. Three of my wives died. I don't love him no more. I don't want a man like that who, who wants to make me smaller than I am. I want to get bigger than I am. He was a beard. I don't want anyone with a beard unless he can prove it. He wants me to adhere to a score. I play a ballad by let's to see for recording. He watches me like a hawk. I might as well be a, in a Camarillo in a trade jacket. He has no right. I must not be judged by the adherence of the score. I use the score to embroider my libido. I have a hell of a time. I don't have a good time in the bathroom. I mean the bedroom. So I do it on the concert stage. Hell with him, you know. Hell with Banker. It's the same as I love making love to a woman. I can make the woman shake like hell. But on the other hand, I can say, sir, you're so wonderful, you're so tender. And my attitude towards a piano is very much like my attitude to, towards a woman I want to make love to. In other words, when I make love on the piano, it's really the woman. The piano is only a mirror, not too good a mirror, but fairly good. Actually, I don't make love to the piano, I make love to a wonderful woman. And it doesn't have to be a particular woman, just any woman, I, I love the feminine sex. As long as I can play the piano and express my view about life, whether I play my own compositions, which is very seldom, or the compositions of any other composer, it's the same thing. It, the important thing is not for me to play their compositions, but to express through their compositions my way of living which, whether you accept it or not, is very important to me. I'm terribly glad if you accept it. If you don't accept it, I'm sorry to say I have nothing I have to do about it, you know. accept that I'm a genius. I only accept that I'm a man, a good time Charlie, you know. I'm a traveling salesman, baby, who likes to play the piano to get girls. And if you don't like it, lump it.
not at all sure whether I am a genius, whether I am a genius. Assuming that I am, I would say I will f feel very humble. Whether it is my genius, let us say, or the genius of Beethoven or Liszt or Brahms or Immanuel Kant, it is subject to a power so far about the individual human being that we can't even grasp it. But we must realize it, that the ultimate cause of genius is far above the result of the genius, you know, sir. a greater man than a pianist. If you said that to me, I just kiss you. What I mean is, it actually, sir, would matter to me more, although I play the piano rather well. If you would say to me, sir, you're a greater human being than a pianist. Are you prepared to say that? 